Hello people, and welcome back to part 17 of Novaria, that city's skyline snow build. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And thank you for all the support over the two weekend streams. Uh, we went live on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and worked on a couple of things. And for those that didn't catch it, we expanded the University of Technology uh, out into this area, uh, integrating some canals into it. Uh, which has turned out really nicely, I think. Now have this kind of like real Main Street look with some of the important level 4 and 5 uh, university assets along here as well. Also one of the content creator stations too. Uh, an aquatic centre with one of the new elevated metro uh, train stations even. And of course some green pit cities car park spice too. So yeah, it's in that really nicely. And then we also did a little, little garbage processing build over here by the highway. It was still quite nicely, used some of the heating plants. Uh, the sneaker factories in here as well. And uh, a waste processing complex and some warehouses. So nice little methods of decorating uh, your highways with some industry stuff. So if you haven't yet caught one of our Sunday live streams, we're kind of working on small little micro builds like this, you know, stuff that doesn't really justify a full episode. So uh, go and check them out. Uh, the VODs are always up on the channel afterwards. However, finally, <laughs> today, we are going to work on the long-awaited and hopefully anticipated uh, downtown road network frame. Can't hold it off any longer. I have, a, I have the downtown itch, so... um. We'll see what we can do with this space here today. So the point of a downtown frame, and for those of you that followed Palavin, you'll know very much how this functions, but for maybe people that are new to the channel uh, that didn't see that episode, I will pop it up in the top right of the screen right now if you want to go ahead and watch it. But a downtown road network frame, um, for me, is something that allows us to start a downtown. It's um, It gives us a base frame that we can then go in and build up kind of 20 individual builds, if you like, that make up a downtown, such as the downtown stadium, the financial districts, transport hubs, high-density residential estates, you know, everything that makes up a downtown area, really, uh, where the vast majority of our unique buildings will lie. And then we've got some really nice opportunities in the area. Uh, there's train lines flowing through here. Uh, we've got a kind of full riverside key, which will duplicate on this side, too. Got some really nice modern city centre uh, commercial alongside the waterfront. Just make it really nice, you know. It's going to be uh, it's going to be really fun. I hope. <laughs> but either way, let's get started on the downtown road network frame, shall we? So you will notice that as the series has gone on, we have prepared all of these, what I will refer to as spines, I guess, um, to flow into this area to allow people to keep moving from all different directions. Um, there is, of course, highway access here now as well, which we'll feed in today. So as these spines start to flow into the downtown, we want to make sure that we're kind of snapping into the road guidelines and keeping everyone as parallel and symmetrical as possible from these initial spines that we're laying out today. So we're going to start bringing this key all the way around the uh, the front of the, the downtown here, alongside the coast, alright? I'm, I'm envisioning a very heavily landscaped park to sit between the key and the skyline. So we'll we'll see how that turns out. So just freeform tool. Lots of nice flowy curves. And then we can bring this to a close over here. And we can just now see our kind of fully keyed waterfront, right? Plenty of opportunities for builds uh, alongside uh, this frame here, all right? So now as we've prepared all these road connections and trains and canals to flow into this area, uh, it's just a case of bringing them all in. All right, so we'll we'll follow the road guideline of the key uh, with this arterial road here. Now at least for a little bit, so let's just see where... So it's at this road guideline where it starts to bend away. So let's start bringing out... A nice little curved road that's going to start following uh, the bend of our waterfront key here, okay? There we go. We're maintaining that same distance all the way around, all right? So this will run uh, for a considerable amount of time, of course. We'll keep it going for a little while. Just, again, align into these road guidelines. 
is always going to be our best friend. Okay, keep it going there as well. And then we can now just let this flow totally parallel. And then we can allow that one to end there, alright? So that's going to be kind of the first uh, base frame in, if you like, okay? So now let's focus on bringing the canals into the downtown as well. So continuing with our shallow canal, this is going to run all the way through here, straight the way through the downtown, right? Nice parallel one down. But I do want it to have some shape, um, because we're going to be uh, doing some different things with the canal uh, throughout the downtown, I think. So we'll continue to bring it up again, continually slap into the angle, which will give us a really nice rundown. Okay? But I don't want it to kind of just be a straight line, right? We're going to maybe throw the angle out here. Okay. And then I think what I want to do with this highway, so it comes down to ground a little bit sooner um, than I would like it. So I think if we grab the canal out by another 10 tiles and then bring it under, we can cross over here no problem, which is going to be fine. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll save that elevation height for the highway for a little bit. Because I think it'd be nice to have some uh, elevated highway infrastructure alongside some of our taller buildings in the downtown. Of course, Palavin's Ring Road was very flat and uh, kind of, you know, just against the, the floor. But we can do something uh, a little different with this one here today, I think. So we now have our elevated highway in. I think this will give us, again, another nice layer of height as the uh, the downtown begins to develop. So, we'll grab our American Trust Bridge now, of course, which we elevated a number of episodes ago, making sure that we're snapping to angle on road length um, as we begin to introduce a new spine into the uh, into the downtown road network. And we're going to go for about there for right now, okay? Keep a measurement of 10 uh, with the larger infrastructure. Maybe another unit you know, of 10 here. And then we can come right up against the canal and then bring it in here. And then we're going to get some, again, some new layers of downtown infrastructure with uh, this new content creator pack now. Kind of work with these sharp little angles, lots of nice kind of brick and stone and all this iron work. And that allows us to flow in a few places. So if we were to give ourselves perhaps a little preview, if we dare, and let's just come down uh, back to the earth and draw in a little supporting road where we can possibly place in uh, one of our more important skyscrapers, something like the Japanese office skyscraper. We can see those layers of height and uh, infrastructure beginning to develop, and of course we'll have roads come off of this, and it nice to see everyone move around. And we'll have several junctions off of this bridge as well. It's not just going to be the one. But of course we'll work on our downtown skyline uh, in a separate episode. This is just the, the road network today. Okay, so that's kind of uh, three spines already fed in. If you're right, we've got the canal, the elevated American Trust Bridge, and the uh, riverfront arterial. So we've got another one down here as well. Let's bring this one over now too. Let's come into our, our regular four lanes and we'll, we'll feed this one through. And not forgetting that we do have rail here as well. So, bring that down as well. There's a, a smaller road here. So we can bring this along as well. Fantastic. Very nice. And then also, uh, these smaller arterials that are flowing uh, parallel with the American Trust Bridge as well. These will all be made use of, of course. And again, great opportunities for kind of more road height here. You know, so it's kind of leaving all these all these free spines available. That's not really going to help us. So I think what I want to do, um, at least for a section of the rail, um, is to actually sink it down uh, into the earth. Okay, so Sunken Rail Network. We will have a little chat about how we do this, and then I will implement it for uh, the rest of the uh, design around here. So it's always a good idea to use dirt roads for this, uh, so let's come in with a uh, distance of five tiles away from this small road. This should be alright. We'll come off our road guideline, then we want to come down by a distance of uh, 280 tiles, which I think is, yeah, it's 14 uh, measurements, isn't it? And then uh, we'll just bring this up and back around. 
pull this in, just like so. Then come into our terrain tools, and then we want to start sinking down by about a distance of 12 meters, uh, which will of course just check that measurement once it's scooped out. So it's flattening out all the area here of where our sunken rail system will occupy. Okay. And then if we come into our pathways onto a small elevation, and then we can check if we come up by one, two, three, and four. So you see how we're still a little bit shallow here. So that's fine. Just sink down a touch more and then grab that new height and then scoop out to that depth instead. So it's just about trial and error. Of course you can have it shallower or deeper if you want, it really depends on the aesthetic look that you're going for uh, within the city. Okay, double check this again now. Let's go ahead and grab our pathway. And again, yeah, that's going to be four tiles, isn't it? So that's going to be about right. It's just about level with the top. That's going to be fine. And then we'll come in and place our dirt roads uh, two parallel with each other um, within the uh, four tile spaces that we've drawn in. So you want to make sure that we're maintaining a distance of four tiles between the outer frames and the inner two roads. Okay, that's going to keep everyone uh, really nice and parallel. Okay. If you're playing with the Natural Disasters DLC, you do of course have access uh, to the uh, the fresh water outlet, um, if you have it. But super important, if you are using sewage, um, don't connect it into your city's water system because once we pump it out, it'll be pumped back into the pipes and your sims will get sick. So just don't do that. So I'll place in uh, a water outlet pipe. Um, let's go ahead and hook this in. This is just fresh water, so it doesn't particularly matter for me. And then we'll watch this fill up with water slowly. Of course, depending on the length of this and the time it takes to fill up, you might want to do uh, one or two more. It really is uh, kind of up to you, really. But we'll let this fill up. So previously, we've always had to use the old keys for this. But now with the simple seawall, uh, we should be able to generate uh, quite a nice design. If you're struggling with iron up placement, you can always snap to your road guidelines. Uh, that'll just make it a little easier to uh, line things up if you're after that extreme parallel look. Uh, and then of course, once you have your keys in, you can then delete your uh, water outlet or sewage pipe if you want. Um, and then connect in uh, a water pumping station uh, somewhere here. So let's go ahead and break this. Place this in, connect it into the system. And then this will pump out the water. So it's important that at this point, if you are using sewage, um, that you don't connect this into the rest of your city's water network because of course you'll be pumping sewage into the drinking water, which is never a good thing to do. So then once the water's out, you can take it back, just add those back in. Uh, and then it's a case of just uh, upgrading these into rails and um, these uh, these dirt roads uh, once you have them in. So we'll come on to and run our road guideline. And then uh, we can have this here. Uh, this is also a nice opportunity to introduce uh, a one-way rail system if you want. It's up to you. Don't have to do it one way. You can just centralize it totally in the middle. Um, you know, just totally different options here. It's really kind of up to you uh, what you want to do with this. Uh, but this is the, the general premise, right? We have a sunken rail network now. And uh, in terms of detail and opportunities, there's always uh, overgrowth action to be had alongside the rail here if we want. Or you can throw in some rocks as well. Of course, a little few bushes will always be nice. This will look much brighter, I think, on um, a map that isn't snow. And of course, you can start bringing uh, walkways across if you like. There's a variety of different designs uh, that we can do uh, with this theme here. In order to get it to, uh, to fit the vibe that we want. So that's the general premise. We just sink down and um, within a dirt road rectangle, fill it with water, draw your keys in, pump the water out. And then you can place in uh, your chosen rail system, be that just the regular uh, two-way or you can go for one-way rail. And I think because we very rarely use a one-way rail. 
uh, we will uh, probably go with this one. So I will um, just extend this process to run um, straight up through here and then bring it back into the national rail connection uh, which flows out over by where the canal uh, re-enters the water. So I'll see you in a minute. Now we have half bully sunken operational train system so i've gone with the two ways instead and i think what we'll do with these um when we come into the downtown builds one of these will become a, a national line uh, which is this one right here which of course is accepting uh, passenger trains and then we'll have one of them operate as an internal um no novarian train line that carries people around the city uh, without accepting uh, passenger trains because you start getting into the realm of train traffic if you start integrating the two onto the same line. Uh, but for right now, it's going to serve as a purpose and uh, it adds a nice layer of uh, depth and design into the road network, especially when it's accompanied with elevated highway and canals and uh, kind of arterial and all of our wonderful decoration that we enjoy on the channel. Uh, but that's going to do it for our, our sunken train system. Uh, it will, of course, be refined as we add uh, junctions on and off of it uh, as the, the downtown grows. Okay, so now that we have kind of the bulk of the, the serious infrastructure in like our elevated arterials and sunken lines and we've adjusted the highway uh, into a, an aesthetic that we want it to look like, it's just a case now of bringing in some very base frames. And um, of course, again, for those that follow Palaban, um, you'll know that this downtown road network um, it is subject to significant change as we come in with what are essentially um, a set of individual modular builds um, that will uh, make up our downtown. Uh, so there's a nice little tip we can do here when we get to uh, kind of parallel small roads like this. This is a great opportunity to start introducing um, a one-way system uh, into the city uh, just to help keep that traffic flow going. So we'll of course right-hand drive so we'll knock it onto the right orientation and then again there's decoration opportunities uh, within this if we wanted to we can start to introduce uh, some pathways if we like let's go for perhaps an amusement park path with uh, no alignment we'll just kind of eye up within the middle of the tiles I bring it right down the middle with no row length as well and uh, there's various things we can start doing with this of course if we're uh, always a little bit tight then we can use the vanilla dirt path to come out instead and then just upgrade these uh, as we see fit. And then, you know, just uh, start to blemish out our road network with these little designs. And, you know, you can imagine as people are walking uh, down this uh, this path here into the skyline, we're going to be getting, you know, some really nice dramatic opportunities. So for me, it's always a nice idea to try and factor in um, the view from the road as well as kind of the functionality of the road as well if that makes any sense <laughs> i hope that it does okay so we'll just start matching up our roads with the canal now so i'm just going to make sure that we maintain um, a distance of four tiles in between each one all right then we can bring this one out under the arterial and start to feed this one-way system into the city as well from couple of directions all right that one's not quite how we want it to appear so let's bring it up a little further and then it'll just allow us to uh snap in a little easier and then come underneath there wonderful change of direction here as well and there'll be some uh, nice designs happening here as well with you know paths coming under the highway and then across the canal and 
so many opportunities. <laughs> there really is. There really is, alright. So, so let's start to discuss some designs about how we can uh, possibly exit off of this elevated arterial. So let's start moving in curves of 10. Of course, using our curve root tool. And we can come down one final step here. Come straight under. And then out. It can be a little bit finicky with the way that it wants to work. But we can get it to fit. Okay, so a couple of designs like this that just hook people into the road. And then we'll see these appear uh, throughout the city. So we can also have a look at some designs for uh, something of an elevated uh, road system to flow over. <laughs> Not like that though, of course. Uh, to flow over the sunken rail network. So we can bring these in in a number of places. Okay. And then just double checking that measurement from top to bottom at 720. So we can redraw that in. And then we know we're snapping to angle and road length here. So we can uh, mimic the tile distance around uh, the sunken rail network, which will of course add to our downtown symmetry. It's a shame this one's just a little bit out, but it doesn't really matter. We can just get away with a cheeky little freeform. You know, it helps to break up those very straight lines as well. Okay, so it's all these little blemishes of road network now. And that will help us to start structuring the frame. So with this uh, passenger line here, this is a internal line that flows from the university into Canal of Area and now eventually the downtown as well. So let's prepare this. So I'm imagining uh, a little bit of green belt that factors in the rail as well. Of course, there are plenty of parks uh, within the downtown and we can cross over uh, our road system here. Of course, if you're not a fan of road crossings, you can uh, elevate these over, but uh, I can't imagine these small arterials will be getting vast amounts of use so we can afford to have uh, something of uh, a rail crossing here. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then again, as we're preparing our downtown frame, I can now just leave this rail line here because I know that our transport hub is going to be located somewhere around here where all our public transport is. And uh, so for now, what I want to discuss is the uh, alignment of the ring road that's going to follow around here. So this is a very key aesthetic as to how I want this particular view here to look. So let's come into our highway roads. We're going to grab a two-lane one-way highway okay so remove this guideline as well so we know where we're snapping to and i think we're going to come in with our straight road tool and then just align direct with the keys and we'll leave a distance of i think 200 in highway road uh, in distance between the ring so the function of a ring road um I'm assuming most major cities have these. This isn't an exclusive UK thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, but it allows kind of high speed travel and access to different parts of the downtown from one side to the other. Uh, and we're also going to have this hook into the highway directly. This arterial, uh, just a, a tiny little bit. Well, quite a bit actually. Probably until the point where it starts to curve. So about here will be fine. And then we're going to fill this out with the ring. Okay. So we'll keep bringing it down in smaller increments. And then we'll come onto our curve road tool. And I want to make sure that we are aligning as best as possible with the key. So just working with those road guidelines. Okay, so a little bit something like that. Let me come out here, we snap onto this guideline. And then we can bring this over as well. And maintain that distance of 200 all the way around. So we can now just start to bring this all the way around. And of course, there's opportunities to bring people with elevated pathways on the key. So we'll have people walking back and to across the ring road, which I think will add quite a nice vibe uh, into, into the ring, seeing people walk back and to across it. Alright, and then we'll come just up to these highway pillars. And then we'll have a look at some kind of merging system for the ring here. So we'll start to bring it on a slightly different angle. 
grab the arterial again. And then we can come with our freeform. Eyeball it into the middle there. That's going to be nice. Back to our two ways. And then with our freeform tool, just get a nice little merge like this. And of course we want to change our direction of travel since we are right hand drive in the area. Bring all this, all this around. Uh, and then yeah, I'm just going to carry on doing this. We'll uh, we'll feed it over our canal here, which uh, should be again quite a nice aesthetic with more elevated road infrastructure coming over. So we'll come up by uh, two points. Bring this down. Just come over nice and easy. Double check 1070 is the descent. And then we can just mimic this on this side as well. No tunnel. And then back to this in. So, what I'll do is I'm going to feed the ring road uh, straight the way through here. And we're going to come under the highway. And we'll do a little terraformed uh, system here for people to get on and off the ring road uh, and then feed it through this way around to you know ring around this side of the downtown and then feed it directly uh, into this highway which of course feeds into uh, last episodes or the episode before uh, four-way highway interchange over here so lots of uh, interconnectivity for the downtown and then we'll do some uh, nice ramps over here as well we can have a little discussion about this while we're over here uh, let's come out from this section with our freeform tool again and then slope too steep here, of course. We'll make sure that we're coming up to a similar height, if not a little bit lower. And then off the road guideline, we can just start to meander at a few of these little slip lanes that, again, are going to add to our very dense transport infrastructure now. So we can see the difference here between Palavan. You know, we're getting lots of layers of very thick transport height. These pillars are a real key aesthetic as to how we want the city to look and function. So I'm very, very keen to get in and start detailing all this <laughs> once we uh, once we get over to this part of the town. All right, and then we can just have some nice smooth highway ramps that are going to feed into our downtown ring. I want to make sure that we're very gradually declining as well. And then we can feed connections into here as we see fit. And then again, there's lots of green belt opportunity around here as well, lots of decoration. And again, it's all going to add layers of height into that eventual skyline look, which will have all these skyscrapers behind it. So I hope this kind of helps hammer home the point of a, a road frame, right? We're just kind of setting up the initial structure of a Navarre's downtown today, as opposed to kind of placing a lot of skyscrapers and whatnot. So uh, I'll get this hooked in, and then uh, we should hopefully see some people actually pick up the ring road so we'll see how it functions but now we have our old friend thomas lee uh, who's using the ring road already to get around he's going to head over to the uh the community school here which will be a, a nice time for him i'm sure you know he's just uh heading home well he's actually driving home but he works at the community school but he's going to grab the ring road and uh and head back down so we've got some People coming down here as well to use the ring, see where they're going. They're driving out of the city, as are these. So let's follow the uh, let's follow Nancy Nancy Crowley. Now uh, let's see where she's going. Get a little first person tour in here as well. Uh, kind of just get a scale of the infrastructure that's starting to develop. So th this is what we want to see, right? You know, people using these high speed roads to get around. You know, the the journey might be a little longer, but the roads are higher speed, so it cancels itself out. You know, you can imagine what this is going to look like with uh, lots of walking paths over and back in between and that skyline as the backdrop with the mountains behind as well. Should look uh, should look quite nice. So we'll head over the canals and then we'll come into the uh, junction under this highway. And then she's going to take the right turn and then head out of the city. Wonderful. So I'll refine this a little bit more. This isn't great at the minute. And then we've just got something similar over here as well uh, with very simple uh, highway exit slip where the highway elevates and then drops back down uh, with direct access into the ring uh, which now encompasses uh, the downtown of course there's a little bit of road junk here isn't there? we need to tidy up but that'll be safe for our detailing time lapse of course 
And then we've now got opportunities to feed an arterial up into the mountains if we want to develop some kind of mountainside community to look out over uh, the downtown, right? Lots of ideas. <laughs> Lots of ideas, I think. Uh, so there we go. That is kind of the, the bulk of our heavy infrastructure uh, laid out. Uh, and it feels like a good place to move into something of what is not really a detailing time lapse, but I guess an expansion time lapse. Uh, oh, there's only someone uh, using the little one-way system here. I guess he has no choice though, right? He has to <laughs> come all the way down here to get back down there. Uh, which is something we need to fix, so we'll have to uh, have a look at that. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to carry on um, expanded something of a very uh, simple American grid. Uh, that will just serve as, you know, those kind of base templates as to what we want to look like. Uh, tidy up some stuff like this, just make it a little, little smoother so we don't have this junk. Uh, but nice to see that this is getting some use now as well, which is always, always healthy. Uh, and then, and yeah, that's it. Just uh, an expansion time lapse. Uh, set out some very basic frames for us to work with over the next 20 or so episodes as we complete the downtown uh, from start to finish. But let's expand and I'll speak to you all in a minute. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below are always appreciated and do help feed my algorithm. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. I'm quite happy with this. Uh, of course, our initial downtown road network frame um, really helps us to build a cohesive and 
downtown that flows from one district to the next. And next episode, we will work on that very uh, intense skyline, of course, and head over to Google Earth to find out what city we will be taking inspiration from for that skyline. But of course, individual public transport networks such as Metro, Tram will all be integrated in the individual downtown modular builds that follow over the next 20 episodes or so. And yeah, we'll slowly start to construct uh, the Novarian skyline, which uh, should be really nice as well. Introduce some highway ramps onto the left of the screen here as well, which are getting some nice use. And some people still picking up the ring road, but of course the entire road infrastructure uh, will become significantly busier uh, as we start to place assets in and around the downtown itself. But otherwise, I will shut up and we'll leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.